This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Um, I'm doing great. I arrived from DC last night. Uh, Nahara was at the NAFOA conference and it was wonderful to visit our friends um, at NAFOA. And for those who do not know me, my name is Jana Borland. I'm the Association Director for the National Native American Human Resources Association. For those who are visiting us for the first time, Nahara is a tribal-led nonprofit organization focused on HR, profession, and tribal leadership. Historically, the association started as grassroots efforts with four tribes meeting to network and share personal challenges and solutions. The meetings evolved into conferences. Soon the membership grew into a formal Northwest and a national association. We are now in our 27th year of existence, continuing to advance and advocate for Native American tribes. If you work for a tribe and you are not a Nahara member, I highly recommend you to sign up for a membership. It's $100 and we provide resources, including certification programs, webinars, annual conferences, summits, and valuable resources for you and your HR team. Additionally, we will host a mental health awareness summit on May 11th and 12th at the Palms Casino in Las Vegas. And S3, who will be presenting today, will be attending and would love to meet you there. The information of our registration and our agenda are available both on our Nahara website and seats are filling up. So I encourage you to register as we are gonna be closing registration on April 30th. Today, I am proud to present our premier Nahara partner, Jeff Gates from S3 Management LLC. When employees struggle with overall mental well-being and stress, the first indicator loss, productivity, absenteeism, and a negative shift in office dynamics. One third of our lives are spent at work, which equates to roughly 90,000 hours during a lifetime. Phew, that's a lot. <laughs> Employers must strive to equip employees with ways to create mental happiness and support in order for them to be productive and successful. The presentation that Jeff Yates will share with us will examine the workplace satisfaction and expose mental health myths surrounding the professional community. Participants will explore practical tools for improving mental well-being. A better workplace environment for employees begins with the well-being of employees. Um, I am recording today's session and it will be available on our Nahara YouTube channel by this Friday. Friday. And if yeah. you are third certified, Barbara Griffin is on this call. She will be also notified those who are third certified that you attended today's session so you can get towards uh, credits towards your uh, THRP. And with that being said, I would like to introduce to you, we have board member, sir, on the call. Member, sir, would you like to say a few words? Yes, good morning. Uh, so happy to be here and welcome everyone who's joined today. Uh, I, this is a, a very timely topic, you know, um, after COVID and I'm hoping to, uh, that we see some of you at the mental health um, wellness um, summit that we're having in Las Vegas. I'm looking forward to to hearing um, this topic and um, just hope you hope you guys enjoy. And if you you know share, um, like she said, it's available on it will be available on YouTube and where our previous coffee talks are stored also. So if you want to see our previous uh, coffee talks, you're you're welcome to do that. So. Welcome, welcome all. Great, thank you so much, member sir. With that being said, I introduce to you Jeff Yates. Thank you, Janet. Good morning to everybody. It's great to be here. Uh, we love to to hang out with everybody that's a part of Nahara, and it's always great to to be back together. It's really fun to talk about this topic, which is 
you know, for being honest, not a super fun topic, but it's one that's really relevant today in our world. And so we look forward to unpacking that. Uh, as, as Janet mentioned, we have um, we've been a serving tribes uh, and, and tribal enterprises across the country nearly 15 years now. Um, we work with all kinds. Uh, my name is Jeff Yates. Uh, I'm the Director of Marketing and Business Development for S3. And uh, we consider it a privilege to get to, to work alongside you folks every day uh, as you serve the amazing people that are your tribal members and the folks that make up your businesses every day. We know it's an amazing task. It's a difficult task and uh, it just doesn't seem to be getting easier. And so our hope is to walk alongside you in that. Um, if we define S3 management, we're a risk management company. And this is just a quick glimpse of what we call the S3 Sentinel, which really covers every aspect of employee risk from start to finish, uh, from hiring all the way through unemployment, workplace misconduct in between. But we're really gonna focus today in an area that would probably be considered employee engagement, excuse me, and also spill over into you know, some workplace misconduct because we're really gonna talk about and unpack mental health and mental wellness. Uh, we have identified this as a critical employee risk right now uh, as member Sir said a while ago, since the pandemic, this is something that it just continues to escalate. We've seen a tremendous increase in, in the pressures that people feel. The mental wellness is is struggling. It's a it's a challenge, and and frankly, when our folks aren't okay at work, we see the effects of that. Relationships are strained. Uh, decisions are are not made well. When they make more mistakes, they're prone to to do things wrong or inaccurately. Now we see, you know, overall that affects the company and the success of a company. And, and for those that run tribal enterprises, that revenue is critical because it feeds back to, to member programs and things that you do to support your tribal members. And so revenue is critical and profitability is critical. Morale in general, uh, we, we've seen well-documented the flight risk, people leaving uh, just at, at any given moment. And overall, even just the, the reputation of your organization when uh, when these issues aren't addressed well. And so we feel like this is of utmost importance. Obviously, we're super excited about uh, the Mental Wellness Summit coming up in, in Las Vegas because it's truly, I think, it's going to bring to the forefront this critical issue. And there's going to be a tremendous education as we talk about how can we do this better and how can we support our folks. So we're going to run through various topics today. Um, you know, I'd point out there was a cup of coffee on that front page and there's a cup of coffee on this one. And that's for a reason. This is coffee talk. So that would suggest it's not coffee lecture. I don't want to sit here and just talk the whole time. Uh, there's a chat box if you have questions or have thoughts that you want to interject. Um, but it truly is my hope that this is a conversation amongst friends that we can just address some some topics that are pretty tough to to look at. They're they're pretty difficult to swallow some of these stats and the things we talk about. But at the end of the day, the 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 reason and the purpose for this conversation is to to walk away with awareness and hopefully ways that we can begin to intentionally make this better for the folks that you support every day. So we'll start uh, just by breaking down. There's you see this in the news every day. You hear these comments, you see it on the on the the, the upcoming summit uh, title. Uh, what is mental health and, and what is mental wellness? So if we go back to just the basic definition, pull out the old dictionary, uh, you know, mental health is, is a person's condition, just kind of how they are psychologically and emotionally. Uh, we would recognize this, that it, that, it, that it affects basically everything about how we act, our emotions, our psychological well-being, how we engage socially. Uh, it affects how we think, how we feel, if we even want to get out of bed in the morning. And so this is an area that, that we truly understand and we feel it. Uh, but as we continue to see this move to the forefront in terms of HR and supporting your teams, it's, it's critical to understand the differences between mental health and what we're going to talk about today with mental wellness. It's also important to note that mental health is something that affects us at every stage of life. Whether you're a young child and you're just worried about who's going to play with you on the playground at school today, or if, you know we get into the horrible things around cyberbullying and social media, all the way through as an elderly person worrying about their health, worrying about losing others. This is 
something that affects us at every phase of life. And, uh, and so there's nobody immune to it and there's nobody that we can't have a meaningful conversation about it. Mental health versus mental wellness. I think this is something that as we have, have jumped headfirst into this, this arena, we've wanted to better understand so that we can help others understand this. Mental health, as we would define it, is truly that clinical side. We're, we're familiar with that. Many of you may offer EAP plans or have a, a health clinic as part of, of your tribal enterprises and, and the support that you provide for your tribal members and your tribal employees. And so we're familiar with this in the sense that it, it would typically mean you go sit with a counselor, you have therapy, you, you talk to someone about what you're dealing with, the emotions that you're feeling, maybe there's medication involved that deals with, with stress or trauma, things like that. Um, your EAP plans that you put in place, this is typically designed to help you uh, handle the mental health of your employees and as we, we know, substance abuse is a major problem, uh, not just inside of Indian country, but all over the world. Uh, and the reality is this mental health clinical diagnosis is probably touches roughly 20 to 30% of our workforce. So it's radically important, but it's not covering the broad base of everybody that showed up at work today. Mental wellness, on the other hand, is, is more preventative. And, and that's from S3's perspective, so many of the things that you deal with every day if you can get out in front of that risk, get out in front of that concern, there are ways to prevent it from getting worse, prevent it before it truly blows up. And that's where mental wellness falls into place. Um, it's, it's a choice in a sense. You learn how to deal with things. You find ways to connect with others. It's a mindset. Uh, there's training involved. There's, there's giving people access to things that truly can meet them where they are, not causing them to have to go elsewhere for help. And so this mental wellness is truly kind of a choice that we make each day, and it literally affects everybody that showed up. And so as we go through this today, those words get interchanged a lot, and we want to make sure that when we're talking about each topic that we're focused on the right things. So this is something that's in the news all the time. We see headlines often what we want to start out is just kind of global conversation about it, the workforce in general. It's not necessarily specific to Indian country. It, it's just kind of the way of the world today. Uh, there's number one fact, employees just simply aren't okay. Okay. When they come to work, we ask them to clock in, but the reality is they're not clocking out from the other things that are going on in their life. And what are those things? In reality, if we look at ourselves, you know, there's 20 of us on this call, each of us probably has something going through our minds today as we come to work. Maybe it's something going on with one of our children. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's finances, whatever it is. The reality is there are so many things in this world today that just continually pelt our employees. A lot of them are younger, younger generations. They have a lot of things going on older generations as well. No one is immune to the worries and the concerns of this world. But at the same time, when they show up at work, we expect them to walk away from this and focus on their job. And if we're being honest, that's just really hard to do. I would dare say we've all burned a day or two in our careers where we just couldn't focus because of something that was happening outside of work. And so we've got to address this. We've got to first acknowledge that this is factual. This is what's going on. Uh, since the pandemic, we've we've seen roughly uh, a 25% increase in the challenges that, that people say that they have from a mental health perspective. Uh, we see that that nearly 84% have have said yes, I've been affected by at least one mental health challenge over the last year. And, and this isn't statistical. This is Jeff Yates' opinion, but I'm guessing the other 16% lied because I would say we're probably all impacted by something along the way <clears throat> at the same time we we know that you know the majority of the workforce is dealing with something every day and, and then this is a stat this came out of a harvard business review so a very credible source a very good resource the study was and this is a scary fact that 68 percent of millennials 81 percent of gen z's which you're working with five to six different generations in your workforce right now, these are the, the two youngest, 
And these are the ones that likely fill most of your jobs when it comes to the hospitality, to the casinos and the different businesses that you run. 81% of them left because they were overwhelmed with something mentally. And so this is a serious problem. And those younger generations have tended to, to really latch on to this more than the older generations have. So this is something that's of great concern because you depend on these folks every day to make your business successful. And in reality, we know they're struggling. And yet this is another sobering fact is that, that only about a third of employees actually feel comfortable using whatever service has been given to them. And that really comes back around to awareness, to education, to the stigma that's still involved when we say the words mental health, that that, that would insinuate that something was wrong with someone when in reality, that's just not the case. And so if only a third of folks are feeling comfortable using a resource, and yet nearly all of that workforce is feeling the stress, you see there's a serious disconnect in how that's working. Let's talk about some of the myths around mental health. You know, a lot of people say a lot of things and they just aren't founded. Social media has given everybody a platform where everybody can be an expert, whether they actually know something or not. Uh, but here's some facts that, that we want to or, or some myths that we wanted to, uh, to break apart because they're just not reality. One is that, that mental health is a sign of weakness, that, that if that person would just suck it up, get, get tough, get out there and do better, uh, that they wouldn't have this condition. That's just not real. I mean, that, that's not a factual statement because anytime something's going on in your life, especially if it's related to, to someone that you love or that you're close to or a relationship type situation, you cannot ignore the pressures that you feel around that while you come to work. Uh, you know, another myth is that these are uncommon. Very few people have this. We already talked about the statistics of how many people in the workforce are truly affected by those different conditions. You think about that slide that said stress a while ago. How many of those topics have you, have you felt or do your employees feel each day? They're very common. Another uh, misnomer is that, that it's caused by laziness. Well, if these people just worked harder, if they just got more motivated, they, they wouldn't have these challenges. That's not true. If anything, it has the reverse effect that when you have those mental health burdens weighing on you, it tends to, to make you almost be less productive because you're just locked up, you're frozen, and it's hard to deal with it. There's no limits as well. You can have a lot more than one mental health challenge at a time. You can have finances in a relationship situation. You can have a health issue that may lead to financial challenges as well. So oftentimes they're intertwined. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to pick and just have one at a time. Um, social anxiety, when somebody's truly locked up, stressed, doesn't mean they're shy. It may mean that they're drowning right in front of your eyes and they just simply need the chance to talk. Uh, and the reality that stress only affects the mind, that's a, that's a complete myth. It, it will affect you physically. Obviously, the extremes would be heart attacks and panic attacks and things like that. But in reality, stress can affect you physically just in how you sleep, whether you sleep at all, wake up at night, how your brain is moving as you're trying to move about your day, and it can physically just paralyze you. And then the last piece here, just that income has nothing to do. If you make a lot of money, you won't have mental stress. That's not true. Um, obviously, financial burdens uh, weigh down a lot of, of employees, especially those hourly wage employees. The cost of living today and how much that's increased, it's making that much more stressful. So income certainly can come into play with that. So these are all myths. We could go on for days about other thoughts and other things that people have when it comes to that. But that's just kind of an overarching view of the world today. These next couple of slides frankly, are, are, are tough um, for me because this is where we really kind of drilled down specific to Indian country. Uh, we made sure that we, we really researched incredible resources that know uh, about Indian country. They have engaged well with the American Indian population. But it's a, it's a, it's a well-documented fact that tribal employers, tribal members, American Indians have suffered disproportionately higher mental health challenges compared to a lot of the other demographics inside the U.S. population right now. There's a lot of things that lead to that, um, and we'll, we'll unpack that more. 
as a tribal employer, you also face the unique challenge of, of being an employer for both tribal members and non-Native Americans. And so you're dealing with two different sectors, one that, that may feel additional burden, additional challenge, um, but in both cases, equally important to support. Uh, so you have that unique dynamic around that. <clears throat> Historically, there have just been various things that have caused a lot of this. Uh, extreme uh, poverty levels that have been dealt with and well-documented of, of tribal members that have lived on reservations, limited resources or just access to things that could help them uh, improve their mental wellness and just this, the sheer fact that they haven't had great access to help. And, and frankly, the sad thing is, and this is certainly not exclusive to Indian country, but the reality is that when people don't have access to help, they don't have the ability to connect with others and to, to talk with others and find ways to kind of pull themselves through these challenges, the coping mechanisms become alcohol, drugs, abuse, things like that. And, and those ultimately, sadly, have, led, have even led to, to higher suicide rates. And so our commitment as S3 is that if we can make a difference in this incredible population um, in Indian country, we want to do that because we believe it is possible to stem the tide, to turn the trends that we're seeing here because we believe that that's possible. These stats were, were literally copied directly from Indian Health Services. This is not anything that, that we have uh, come up with on our own or our assumptions, but these are these are facts that, that Indian Health Services has published with high suicide rates, with high alcohol-related deaths, uh, with high drug use, methamphetamine, drug overdose rates. And I think the, the last uh, point is, is one to note, nearly a 40% increase in overdose deaths just since 2019, 2020. All of these things are saying one thing, and we had it on the slide earlier, employees simply aren't okay. And so we see the sad outcome at times where people have chosen to take another way to, to try and address this challenge. And we want to, and we know that Nahara is fully committed through their wellness summit and the awareness that they are bringing to this topic. There is a commitment from everybody on this call that we wanna make this better and we wanna find a way to do that. So how do we do that? It's a tall task, right? We're battling history. We're battling things that have just been done a certain way for years. Uh, economic barriers, whether it's cost, it's expensive to go see a counselor, it's expensive to go to a health and wellness center and, and get help, even medications and drugs are difficult. Uh, the lack of awareness, the accessibility, the stigma like we've talked about. Uh, a lot of times, the lack of cultural sensitivity. It, it's, it's a fact that, that Native American Indians have unbelievable cultures. They have their own unique cultures within each tribe and, and each tribal nation. And so there's not a solution that can come in and just say, we're going to fix this one size fits all because we have to be sensitive. And we have to recognize the, the unique nuances of each tribe and their members. Um, there's a mistrust of healthcare providers. And I don't think that's limited to Native Americans. I think that's just America in general right now. Can we trust our healthcare system? Can we trust doctors? Can we trust what's being told to us? Um, and then the last thing is just how do we get out in front of this? That lack of, of intervention strategies, how do we get out in front of this before it gets to the point where it's really gotten bad? So we've got to find ways to break these barriers. We've got to, to make this happen. So it's a fact, again, we, we kind of touched on this earlier, we're facing more challenges than ever before. We leave them unchecked. We're, we're going to see that that's gonna really turn into more serious mental health issues. Again, we're talking about if we can get out front, address mental wellness before it gets to the point of mental health, where it becomes clinical, where it becomes a diagnosis, where it becomes medicated. We wanna stay out front of that because the reality is this, more than 90% of those that have that mental health challenge today, pick a word off of that stress slide. The majority, the overwhelming majority, more than 90% don't need clinical help. They just need a way to connect with someone. They need a way to find someone else that understands what they're going through, 
that maybe has already been through a similar situation and they're they're given assurance, they're given help, they're given coaching, they're given guidance that they're going to be okay and they're going to get to the other side. And so it starts by finding a, a suitable area where you can connect with others that are very similar. Uh, de and I, that's a topic we hear a lot, you know, again, coming out of the pandemic and all kinds of different race relations and issues. But there again is a reality that there are very specific compatibility challenges when it comes to getting help. You can't sit with someone that's never been through the experience you're going through and expect them to truly relate to how you're feeling. They can be clinically trained to help you walk down a path of how to change your thoughts. But it's so much more powerful when you connect with others like you that are have been through that same situation. And then access. This is another huge thing. So since the pandemic and, and the rise of interest in getting uh, scheduled appointments with counselors and things like that, there's in some places up to a two month waiting period just to get into a counselor to talk to them about your problem. Well, in reality, that stress doesn't go on hold for two months so that you can then deal with it when you go sit down with this trained counselor. You need access when it happens. You need access at any point in time, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And so whatever that solution is, there's got to be access. It's got to become easier for folks to be able to reach out and get that help when they're in the midst of that problem. So again, this chart kind of lays out what it would look like, especially for an employer with an EAP plan, we tend to, to put programs in place, whether that's through health insurance, through benefits, through a, a tribal health program that provide the right-hand side of this chunk. We have a crisis hotline. We have counselors. We have a, a, a local health center that you can come to and talk to people. But these are difficult. There's the inconvenience. I have to go. And there's a stigma around that. What if somebody sees me go there? What if they... But if I have to go ask my, my direct report, how do I use this EAP plan or how do I access this care? And so there's, there's a concern about what others might think about that. Um, it's, it's difficult to get there. And, and at times there's a cost related to that. And if you're already struggling and one of those concerns is finances, the last thing you really want to do is go pay a, a high dollar amount just to sit for an hour and talk to somebody about your problems. That's actually adding to that stress. And so while these programs are fantastic and they are needed, and there are absolutely situations where we need that clinical health, the mental health that we talked about, the majority of folks live on the left-hand side of this where we just need to find a way to connect better. We need to remove these barriers of entry and give people a chance to do that. So. What we want to show you now is something that we are, are super excited about. Um, we've shared this with Nahara, and we are excited to, to share it with you guys, because as we have, have understood these challenges and we've seen the opportunity here, and we've been in, in search of a way to truly make a difference. And we, as we looked at this, just felt like this was something that others needed to hear about. We feel like this is a program and an opportunity that can truly equip tribal employers to make a difference. And so I just wanna share these thoughts with you because it's something very different and it's something that's gonna look very different, but we believe that if we can talk through this and walk through this, that there might be an opportunity where this could begin to serve your employees well. So we've talked about this, uh, that we don't wanna start on the, the right side of this chart. We wanna start on the left. And in reality, there is power in human connection, that peer-to-peer -peer connection, somebody that looks like me, that sounds like me, that has grown up like me, that has lived through something that I'm now going through, that power of being able to connect directly with someone like that is going to help me improve my mental wellness before it gets to a point of mental health, if I will truly make that choice and engage, but have a resource where I can find others that actually match that criteria. So S3 has launched a program that allows you to do this through an app. Uh, it's all web-based. There are more than a hundred different topics that you can choose from. So as someone sets up their profile in the system, they literally can pick 
first who they are, their age, their, their demographics. And then from there, they can select topics that are relevant to them. That stress slide earlier, that just had a few, a few, but we could go on probably well more than a hundred. But you have the ability to find people that literally are dealing with or have dealt with the very same issues that you're you're dealing with right now. And let's face it, as HR professionals, if that's the seat you sit in, being an employer is incredibly complicated right now. Everything from race, gender, age, all the other stresses from the outside world, those are the things that are weighing on your employees. So having the ability for them to set up a program where they are then connected directly to others that have been through what they're going through. Now, the power of this is that first, it's available 24-7. So if it's on Friday night and you're struggling at 10 o'clock, you can reach out and find some support. The first level of that support is actually a vast catalog of pre-recorded stories of people that have already walked down this path. So we're enabling someone to connect with others. They don't have to talk to anybody. Nobody else knows what they're doing. It's completely anonymous. But they can find others that have been through that same challenge, and they can sit and they can listen to hours of stories of how others have come through a difficult situation. Just starting there has proven already that that will increase the mental wellness of that employee significantly. It takes them from feeling overwhelmed to feeling happy, literally just by listening to those stories. If someone is really interested in, in what a person has said and wants to engage further, then they actually have the ability to connect directly with one of these certified listeners. And so the ability to connect and then talk with someone enables you to actually have a conversation, not with a trained clinical professional, but with another human being just like you. It matches you up with people that are like and kind, and, and then based on the, the problems that you're dealing with. And so that power to have a human connection and actually have a conversation can take that to the next level. And our view of this is that it plugs in out front, preclinical, minimizing that risk of getting to the mental health side. So it's super exciting to think about the ability to do that. One of the areas that we feel like has tremendous opportunity here as well is that there are lots of Native Americans that exist today in the United States that have been very successful in battling these challenges. And so one of the coolest opportunities we have is to open up an opportunity for them to be able to become peer listeners and help other Native Americans that are going through struggles. Incredible, cool way to give back and to be able to be a part of this program. Then they have the ability to connect with others. This is the outcome that we see. And the last thing we touch on is that from an employer standpoint, you're always wanting to know how you can help your employees, how you can make things better. And while you won't be able to see what an individual selects as far as their topics, you won't see their name, you will have insight into what your employees as in general are selecting. And so if there are consistent topics that multiple people are addressing or they're reaching out about, that might be a great suggestion then for a broader program or a broader awareness campaign that you could do across your, your general employee population. But this data, this information, this feedback helps you as an employer truly be in touch with the things that are affecting the mental wellness of your employees. And when we create happy minds, when we create positive minds in these employees, number one, they feel supported. They feel like you have given them something that is truly equipping them to be more positive, more healthy, healthy mentally. And at the same time, in return, you're getting a healthy, productive employee that is doing a better job every day in the workforce. So we are super excited about this. We can't wait to be in Las Vegas and, and talk more uh, with anybody that, that's interested in, in learning more about this because our commitment, just like Nahara's commitment to the summit, is that we want to help and we want to make a difference in how we can do this is by creating an opportunity for people to truly engage at a peer-to-peer -peer level. So just kind of a quick summary, where we've we been today. 
uh, mental health, it's, it's an issue. It's a challenge for employers. It's not going anywhere. It is just part of life. And so you have a choice to ignore it and just hope it turns out well, which I think we all know how that's going to end. Or you have the opportunity to embrace it and really create a mechanism where, from a reputational standpoint, you become a, a place that people want to work because they see that you're investing in their people. Uh, you see that you're going to get uh, a, a much po much more positive outcome when you do that. Uh, we also can acknowledge that that employers in general are facing these challenges, but we know that in the Indian country brings a separate set of challenges, and we are determined to make a difference. And we know that we can purely through the hard work that you guys do every day as you're engaged with your workforce. We know the historical barriers, and at the same time, we can utilize technology, we can utilize things that we have learned to bridge those barriers in a very inexpensive way to help others to, uh, to make opportunity to have that connection. And we're committed to help you with that. So I'm gonna stop there and um, ask from there. I see Janet, you're... Jeff? Um, yes, not that I, I work in an organization, but um, had I been working in an organization um, and overseeing uh, wellness programs, this is something that would very much intrigue me because as you talked about this, you know, um, having people being afraid, um, you know, we had employees even being afraid to go on FMLA. So I can only imagine how people would feel about going in and talking to someone about any um, mental health issues. And I'm very intrigued by your app. How is that app and, and the cost, is it associated based on your employee headcount? How, how, how does that work? It, it is, and there, there are some things that we would just need to talk through with each individual organization, but um, it the, the model is on a per employee per month basis, um, very inexpensive, um, typically going to be less than $2 an employee per month, uh, much less than an EAP plan costs, we know that. Um, but there, I would also tell you there are still some some areas of opportunity that each tribe can explore because we see this as an incredible opportunity for, for tribal members uh, or, or for tribal employers and, and their employees. But we see this as a tremendous opportunity and resource for your entire tribal membership. And so obviously if, if you have you know, 15, 20,000 tribal members, we, we would have to come up with a different way that we would approach that. And so, I would tell you that, you know, just from an employer standpoint, those are good numbers to start um, from a budgeting standpoint, but that there's opportunity based on the, the breadth of how we want to try and, and cover an entire tribal membership and what that could look like as well. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And um, if we were to be interested, we would email email you as well. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. we're, we're, sorry, there you go. That's my, that's my contact info and, and s3managementgroup.com is our website. We will be at, uh, at the Wellness Summit as well. We're super excited to be there for both days, all day, hanging out, having conversations. And we, we honestly, we want to learn from the folks that are on this call today as well. We, we think we have an interesting solution that, that could fit well and address this issue up front. But at the same time, we recognize you guys live in the trenches every day. And so we're really interested to understand your perspectives as well. So we look forward to conversations. Um, and certainly there's the opportunity if somebody wants to really dive deep, we can walk through the platform. We can do a demo of the platform and all those type things. Our goal for today is just to, to stimulate conversation around what if there is a different way, because we believe there is. And that's what we're excited about. That's great. There's some um, questions in the chat, uh, Jeff, yeah. if you can go through them. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, so the faith-based um, part of the, the sign-up process is that you can choose 
um, what your affiliation is, whether you're you have a certain denomination or what your belief is, and then it will match you up or pair you based on that. Um, and so, you know, that is one aspect of the program. You can actually search into that. Um, the other uh, the other question about the peer to peer and the licensed professionals versus peers. So there is a certification process that a, a certified listener will go through. Uh, it includes everything from background checks and understanding who they are. And then the first 30 to 60 days that they are on the platform as a listener, uh, they are recorded, they are coached, uh, they are limited on the number of calls because it is of utmost importance that the folks that we go through the certified listener program are doing this job well. And, uh, and so it's, it's a very uh, well vetted out process. And, and that's the exciting part that we see inside of, of Indian country right now today. If you go into there, you know, that's one of the options you can choose is to connect with someone else that their heritage is Native American. But we believe we can really broaden that platform in the coming months as we start to add additional uh, tribal members that come on board as certified listeners, because we want to celebrate those that have done well. And we want them to be able to have an opportunity to pour into others just like them to help them become that next success story. Great. Um, yeah, there is a question from um, Shannon. Yeah, I think I just talked about that around how the, the peers are selected and so forth. I think we've covered all the questions so far. We can ask Shannon if that satisfies the question or if not, happy to visit further as well. Yes, that answered my question. Thank you. Okay, absolutely. Great question. Thank you. I might add too, it is a paid position as a certified listener. And so, you know, in a world where some small incremental income is helpful, that's another great way to uh, to help tribal members be able to get some compensation for sharing their stories. And I'm happy to uh, to introduce you the, to Shannon. Shannon is a new partner from Newport Health um, that works with people with trauma and um, childhood trauma. And we're really excited to have Shannon and her organization as a partner. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. And I, I, I also, Jeff, I want to, I've written down your information here because I want to meet with you separately because I can tell you just peer to peer is, is really powerful. Um, just within the population that we serve, you know, oftentimes when we are in kind of the intervention stages, when we can have an alumni of a similar background talk with a patient, a potential patient or with a parent, um, it really helps them connect. So just really, um, again, that peer-to-peer -peer is, there's a lot of strength in that. So I'm, I'm really interested in hearing more about, about this. Yeah, thank you for that, Shannon. I think you make a great point too, in different situations like what you, what your example just was. Sometimes we're talking about the person that's battling that, but then there is a support system around that person uh, and and they need help at times too to walk through a journey when they're trying to support a loved one that's struggling, and uh, to, the power of that opportunity as well is tremendous. We we think about that a lot with caregivers as well, whether they're home based caregivers or people that are in the industry. So that's a great point you made. Well, and and uh, another point to make is for anybody here who has been a parent to a teenager. Um, you know that you are like the dumbest person in the world to them and they don't listen to you. So when we can use peers that can kind of help them, you know, pull through that, you know, you know, kind of what I learned in, in, in my programming is that, you know, mom and dad really aren't the dumbest people in the world, but um, they, you know, when they can talk to a peer, they're more likely to engage than having mom tell them they have to do something or dad tell them they have to do something. It's just going to be another pushback. So Peer to peer is really good. That's awesome. Thank you.
Terry Lynn, I see your question about time frame. Uh, this is a, a program that can roll out fairly quickly. Um, it, it will be rolled out um, in conjunction with any existing health care plan or EPA plan that's there. Uh, one of the slides that was up there earlier, the, the far right screen was part of the app where you can actually plug in your health insurance links, your EPA plan links. And so it can truly be one resource to get to anything. And so that launch can be customized specific to the organization and their existing other services around these things. Uh, but outside of that, um, it can move very quickly. Um, typically, you know, from start to finish, would think that we could be in there, you know, in 30 to 45 days, you could be up and running and live. Jeff, I had a comment that I wanted to make yes, in regards to, I guess, this is a great tool in um, that, you know, a lot of our reservations are are isolated. I used to work for the Leachhead Band of Ojibwe. It was a rather large, large reservation and, you know, could take 45 minutes to get from one, one side of the community, you know, uh, reservation to the other in very isolated communities. So I could see this as a great tool for that. You know, a lot of tribes offer services through the Indian Health Service and have clinics on their reservations. And um, it, it's probably difficult for those people to make it to those um, facilities when it's a large isolated reservation. So I could see this as a great tool for that. We have a, a tribal health center on our reservation, and it's you know we have we're a very small reservation, so everybody has has adequate access to it, and they have a full agenda each month of activities going on, and um, we even have like a horse program, you know, through our behavioral health, uh, where you know horse therapy, equine therapy, and and things like that. So I, I think they go above and beyond here, but I feel that our yes our community doesn't utilize all of the services even as small as it is because we you know we have a behavioral health program we, we have a lot of programs through our tribal health center and i think that there like you said you know there's there's almost a stigma where people don't want to reach out um and i just i think this is just another way of reaching out and in, in kind of a private way too so um, I think it's great, you know, it's something that that I'm sure, you know, we'll, our our organization would discuss. So um, it's something that I could bring to our uh, CEO at our tribal health center and let him know, you know, there, here's another tool that we could perhaps use. So I just want sure. to make that comment. No, thank you so much. I really appreciate your comments and your feedback. And I think I think you're exactly right. I think it sounds like you guys have, have done an incredible job of equipping your tribal members, and yet the utilization is still not what you would like it to be. And you're you're spending significant dollars creating that support to, to just go unused. And and this I think that's one of the, the biggest nuances about this opportunity is that literally from your couch, when no one else knows, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you can reach out. And, and listen or connect with someone and visit with them. And for one, like you said, ease of access. You don't have to drive across the reservation to do it. You can do it from your home, uh, but also the privacy of it, I think is one of the biggest things that uh, is different from the, the amazing programs that you're running. And our hope would be that they would work hand in hand and that as people see the opportunity to improve mentally, uh, that maybe they start to partake in some of the other opportunities as well, because we want to we want to have those healthy minds. So great job on what you guys are doing, and uh, gosh, we'd love to to visit with you sometime just to learn more about you guys. So thanks for your kind words, Jeff. I wanted to add it's it's um it's really refreshing just to see tools um to help people. I mean, it's all of us. I mean, I would love to talk to someone at three o'clock in the morning. You know, I'm not going to call a friend up at three o'clock in the morning and wake them up, but just to have a tool. Um, we we live in an ever-changing world um, with technology, and I'm so happy that there's technology towards uh, mental wellness and having that peer-to-peer. -peer. And 
very grateful um, that you shared this wonderful tool with us and I'm excited to have you at our mental health summit so we can play with the app and really take a look at that app and and um, spend some time with you so thank you so much um, for those who are on the call um, um, i included jeff's email um, he's always available when that emails me back like immediately um, jeff would you uh would you be able to share your slides today we are recording this session but i know that I've gotten some some people in the chat that would be really interested in looking at your slides. Would that be available? Yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll email them to you this afternoon and then you can feel free to share them. Wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jeff. Do you have any closing words before we no, just, jump off the call? Yeah. To, to, to you, Janet, and, and to uh, to your board members that are on today, thank you for the chance to, to just walk beside you on this journey. Uh, what a privilege it is to, to serve Indian country. It is such a unique world, and we're just in love with it. We love helping, and so thank you for that. And for those of you that, that took time out of what I'm sure are very busy days, um, I just hope that there was, was something that, that was a value that, that prompts you in ways that you can go back and, and serve your employees well. So just thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. We can serve you in any way. We'd love to visit and uh, just hope everybody has an amazing rest of their day. Wonderful, thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you everyone who joined today. And our session will be on our Nahara YouTube channel this Friday. Thank you everyone, have a fabulous day. Thanks, bye-bye.